Okay, so we're going to start preparing the Apple Mac now, the machine. And the first thing I'm going to do is to get hold of a Linux distribution which we can use as a host, i.e. Um, an operating system we can boot into that will be compatible with building Linux from scratch. Now you can, in theory, use any um, any type of Linux operating system to build Linux from scratch. The only problem is, um, by default, when you it will be a live image that you, you'll need to use, obviously, because we don't want to install that onto the hard disk. It will just get in the way of everything. But you'll need a live image, um, and that live image needs certain tools installed. And most live images aren't really in um, a situation where they can be uh, used straight as they are to build in from scratch. Uh, they normally need additional tools installed, um, no normally development tools, whether it might, might be the compiler or it might be support tools, for example, like Make or Patch, which are needed as part of the Linux from scratch build. However, there is one um, distribution that I found that does have all these tools available um, on a live image uh, called Endeavor OS, and I'll be using that, showing you how to download it, how to write it to a USB stick, and um, how to boot it and check it that, that it has got all the facilities that we need, all the programs that we need. As so, you can use any other um, flavor of Linux, but you will need to almost certainly you will need to install other tools. Um, I did do some videos on the top 10 uh, Linux distributions according to DistroWatch, which is a website that um, kind of tracks what versions of uh, Linux distributions are on, what um, versions of software they use, and a bit of information about them. They keep a sort of top 100 or top 200 of distributions. Um, and what I did once a few months ago was to just take the top 10, go through them out, uh, go through them all, identify what packages need to be installed and how to do that and any other changes that need to be done. And I created a video on each one of those 10 distributions. So if, if the one you choose is one of those, then you can check on my channel, look for it, um, and you can follow that if you're having trouble. Or if you don't want to use Endeavor OS and you want to try another one, again, you can look through my channel for those videos and, as I say, I'll describe exactly how to prepare each of those distributions for building Linux from scratch. So, as I say, I'm going to be using one called Endeavor OS. So, the first thing we need to do is to actually get hold of the image and write it. So, what I'm going to do is get Safari up and just type in Endeavor OS and you'll see there's this first link here. There's the web page and if you scroll uh, sorry, no, if you go to this link here, download help, click on latest release and then scroll down near the bottom there's a, a grid here with a download location so it's obviously best if you pick a location that's fairly close to you I've already downloaded the image just to save a bit of time. And I've also downloaded the um, SHA-512 uh, checksum file as well. Uh, you can download the GPG SIG file, but I couldn't get the command to work in the Apple OS. I don't know if it's another package that needs to be installed on Apple or if it's another command. Uh, so I didn't actually download that. I've just downloaded the... Um, uh, signature file for the ISO that downloaded. Um, although this this command is not not correct for an Apple, it would would work in Linux, but not not in the Apple. So we'll have to uh, take account of that. So once you've downloaded it, what we need to do next is to go to this launchpad icon and then this other icon and fire up a terminal. And I'll just make this a little bit bigger. I'm sorry, I don't know if there's any way of 
actually setting a font size I couldn't find it so I'll just click this a few times make this a little bit more legible let's do one more maybe yeah that'll do and so I've been dropped into the home directory for my user kernel text so I'll just do CD download and list the files there. You can see the security system in the Apple OS is asking if I want to allow that command to run. Yes, I do. And there you can see there's the two files that I downloaded earlier. There's the ISO file, that particular one there, which is just about two gigabytes, and the signature file. So what I need to do is to run the signature check on this um, like I say, this command here won't actually work. So what there is is a SHA sum command. Um, and if you run it, it will just sit there, obviously, because it's waiting for input from the terminal. Um, if you do um, help, it will tell you how to check some A512 file. And you can see it says minus A and 512, obviously. So SHA sum minus a 512 just check to see if there's an option for checking yes there is minus c so that bit's going to be the same minus c and we want to check the endeavor os iso file so i'll just run that and hopefully it'll come back either saying okay i'll just come back with uh, the prompt oh yeah i've done that wrong that should be the actual SHA SUM one, uh, SHA five one two SUM file, not the file itself. So yeah, it's reported that the file is okay. So that's all we can do at the moment for that. As I say, we can't check the GPG. I don't know how to do it, um, or what the command is, or even if there is a command by default on the Apple OS. So what I'm going to do now is to plug in my spare USB stick. I forgot to mention that's another requirement. Um, but I've got a 2 gig USB stick. That's the minimum size you'll uh, be able to get away with for this Endeavor OS. It's um, just, just a shade under 2 gigabytes. Um, so 2 gig is just, just big enough to take the um, ISO image. See when I um, plug the USB stick in, it's blank. It wants me to. It wants to know what to do with it. So I don't want to eject it because we won't be able to see it from the system. I don't want to initialize it because we're going to write over the ISO that we've downloaded. So I'll just do ignore, and that's okay. It's the system that will know about it now, but um, it's not done anything with it. So now. What we need to do is go back to the launch pad and load up the disk utility here. Because what we need to find out now is what this um, USB stick's been identified as. And what I will do, just in case I need to come back to this, is to pin these. So you're having to hunt around from again. Um, now, so we've got the disk utility here. Um, it sometimes helps to show all devices because um, it can get a little bit confusing as to what you're looking at on, on this screen here. Uh, but what we've got here, we've got the internal drive. So this is the SSD disk that's inside the machine and this is the uh, USB stick that I've just inserted. And you can see the the internal disk is split up into various different partitions and containers and so on. Um, but the Kingston DT Elite USB stick I've just plugged in. The bit we need to know is what it's called and you can see it's called disk 2 here. So that's how we need to refer to it. So next thing I'd need to do is to become root to be able to write to that device. Um, but I need to know what directory the downloads are in. It's the, the absolute directory. So I'm just going to do print working directory. And then I'm going to become root with that command. Type in my own password. And now I'm root. And then I need to change directory 
to the location just makes things a little bit easier having to type in the directory all the time paste that in change to that directory and hopefully I should see those two files again and yes I can so now I need to use the command DD to write that image so I specify the in file equals the ISO file and the out output file is slash dev slash and the name the designation that's given here which is disk 2 and I can use a block size just to speed things up a bit of 64k is a pretty reasonable size and press enter and again it's asking me uh, the security system is asking me um, whether this this application terminal can access the removable drive yes I want to allow that and now it's starting to write the, the, to the USB it's actually got a LED on the USB and I've just looked at it and I can see that it's flashing so that confirms that it's being written to but apart from that there's no way at the moment of knowing when it has finished however um, this information here should change I, I, I'm hoping it will do anyway it depends because this doesn't always show every, every bit of information about the disk unfortunately and we'll see that in a little while so while that's writing what I'm now going to do is go to the internal hard disk and create some room for the Linux from scratch and what we need to do to do that is to uh, reduce the Mac operating system allocation so you can see at the moment Mac OS has been allocated to all of the disk if you look at the container disk you can see um, of that about 15 and a third gigabyte is used by the system uh, 6 gigs used by the data, there's a bit of VM, some pre-boot um, and there's another little bit not mounted there so kind of you know um, Apple's like proprietary stuff uh, they do things the way they want to do it and you know we don't know what this is all about so um, it doesn't really concern us anyway but it's also all to do with the way the system works uh, and then we've got like a, is that a snapshot or a container or something there and so on so as I say what we need to do is to partition this and make some room so if we click on partition you get this graphical display of the whole hard disk this hatching here is the currently used or allocated um, part of the operating of the disk that's um, in use so we can't use that part but you can see because it's a fresh install of Big Sur it's basically empty the rest of the disk so all we do is just click on this plus and what we want to do here is to add a partition if you add a volume it will just become part of the Mac operating system so we want to create a partition and you can see it's now divided the disk into two equal partitions the existing Mac OS has been reduced down to half the space 250 gig and it's given us uh, an untitled um, partition um, with the other half of the available space so I'm just going to call that LFS so I know how to refer to it and I'm going to format it as MS-DOS now I've tried formatting this various ways and I've found it's easiest to format it as MS-DOS um, I've tried using XFAT and that seems to cause problems with the um, the GPT table, the actual allocation table, uh, MS-DOS. I don't think I've had any problems with it. I seem to seem to remember when I've been playing around with this that I have fewer problems with the MS-DOS FAT option. So that's the one um, we we'll need to choose. It's unfortunate that we can't create an unallocated partition because that will be ideal because we're going to format this anyway to a Linux um, formatted file system. Uh, so for now, just create an MS-DOS FAT. We'll delete it when we're in the Linux environment. Um, uh, so you can try using others, but it's probably not a good idea in case it does form part of the Mac OS and you break something else. So yeah, just stick with MS-DOS. It'd be the best thing to do. Interestingly, it takes the size allocation away from us, but again, it's not really important because we're going to use all this space if you do need extra space then you can just click and hold this dot here and just move it around 
um, to give the macOS more or less space but I'm just going to take the default it's not really that important to me just click apply click on partition and then continue it says it will cause the computer to stop responding um, it won't take long though because it's not got much to do but once that's finished um, hopefully the uh, USB will uh, finish writing as well so, so this will just take a, roughly a minute or so to do um, if you are on an existing mechanical disk then it will take a lot longer it could take 20 minutes perhaps even more depending on um, how much stuff is on the disk As it says there, it could take several hours. Um, you know, if you've got a big disk, if st there is stuff scattered around, um, but th this shouldn't take too long, as it's uh, uh, empty. As I say, it's just um, a fresh install of Big Sur, and um, there's there's nothing else on there, so it should be fairly quick. Okay, so see, so this is what I've have, have happened, have had happen before. Is it says that the operation um, has failed. Um, it doesn't actually fail. It just seems to, uh, I don't know, just doesn't seem to do something quite right, and I'm not sure why. Um, but the operating system itself is fine. Um, it's just some of the allocation details that we'll see later. Um, just doesn't seem to work correctly for some reason. Um, I'm not sure if that's because it's not a proper Apple disk or for some other reason I don't know. Anyway that's finished. As you can see we've now got a separate um, partition uh, for Linux from scratch and also while that was working we've got um, the USB stick written as well. And what I was saying before about this not showing all the details, even though I've told it to show all devices, you'll see this disk 2 um, has got an allocation designation of disk 2 S3 now, so that, that's the third partition on there. But interestingly, it's not showing us the other two partitions that are now on that USB stick. Um, if I do ls-l slash dev slash disk 2 star, you'll see there there are other partitions so it's not actually showing all the information um, it's just showing I don't know what it's showing or why it's not showing it's just showing a certain amount of information on there so anyway we've now written our USB stick um, with the Endeavor OS and we've shrunk down the internal hard disk so we've got some space to put Linux from scratch um, onto the disk so what I shall do now is I'm going to reboot just to ensure that the Mac OS is still um, valid it, it will be um, I've never never seemed to have a problem it seems it seems to work fine so I'll just click on restart yes I'll have reopen the windows uh, we'll have to terminate this because I'm in I'm running the, an SU command on this, that's why that's come up, so I'll just click terminate and just wait for the Mac to reboot. As I say, unfortunately some of the early stuff that appears on the screen, so for example the Mac logo has just appeared, you can't see that because this Thunderbolt port has not been activated yet, um, but luckily once it gets 
so far in it does it does appear on the screen eventually okay so as you can see we can boot in okay again and there's no apparent problems Yeah, everything's coming back as it was.